In this video, I'm going to show you how to print items at very specific sizes. In this example, the assumption is that we were given a frame and this image needs to fit in the frame. Now, if you're an Art 195 student, this will be a continuation of a project that you've been working on for a while. But if you're any other student or you happen to be watching this video at another time, this will just serve as a way to figure these particulars out of how to put stuff for a frame or a very specific size. So all you have to do is if you have other sizes than what we're talking about in this video is just substitute your print size and your paper size. Okay, so the assumption with the current project is that we have a particular artboard size set up, which in this case happened to be 13 by 19. We're going to set up a new document for printing, which is pretty wise because if you make any mistakes along the way, at least you have your image that you've been working on. So go ahead, do a final file save on that one, and then we're going to create a new document. Now in this new document that we're going to create, we are going to print two of our prints on one page. It just happens to work out that way that if we set up the document rather than 13 by 19 to 19 by 13, we can get two prints on it. Now, if you're using a type of printer that has just four cartridges in it, CMYK, then go ahead and set the document up for CMYK. But in this particular example, I will be using an Epson inkjet printer that has a bunch of different colors in. And for that reason, we're better off to switch over or to stay in RGB mode, whatever the case is. So let's go ahead and set up our new document. We'll go into Illustrator. We're going to go File, New, we're going to go under Size here, and for the width, we're going to put in 19, for the height, 13. Now, I only need one artboard, so I'm going to change this to one. I want to be in inches, so maybe that's the first thing you want to change if you're not already in inches, and then just set this up to, to 19 by 13. If you need to pause this for a second, go ahead. Um, under the Advanced section, this is where if you're using an inkjet printer with a lot of different cartridges, you want to set this to RGB. We click OK. We get our new document with our artboard. Then we're going to go over to the document that we had been working on and we're going to copy and paste the item that we want to print. Now, before we do that, we want to make sure that there are no layers locked and no sub layers locked. Best way to do that, go over to your layers panel, use a little drop down, and if you can see unlock all layers, select that. Anything that was locked in there will be unlocked now, and then go up to object, go to unlock all. If that's not grayed out, select it. That'll unlock any sub selections that you have. And then we're simply gonna draw a marquee around the one that we want to print. We'll do a copy, and then into the new document, we will do a paste. Now, before you would actually print this, you would do some tests from like a small section that includes like all the different colors that you want, even if you have to kind of copy and paste some things in here. And I'll show you how to do that in class. However, um, even if you're working in the library or at home, you can still follow all the steps that I'm about to do. Get this set up for printing so that you're ready to print in class, but before you do, you can go ahead and make a test print. Um, you should be saving often here. So let's go ahead and do that before too much time goes by. And I'm going to go ahead and call this Clint for print and save that out. I happen to have one already uh, that I'm replacing. In your case, you won't have that. Now, in our case here, if we wanted a huge printout of our person, we would do it from this particular um, starting document. Uh, where the heck are you? Just um, make a, a, a new artboard or you know replace this one on this artboard. Um, some of the steps that I'm about to show you, however, you may still want to do here before you printed a bigger one out, um, such as clipping to get, you know, to, to save yourself some ink. And uh, you'll see all that in this document that we're setting up. Uh, in our particular case here, the idea is that somebody bought us a frame to put this in, and we want to make two copies for two different frames. 
So first let's talk about the frame that we got. According to the package on the frame, it's an eight by 10 inch frame. That is usually way off. So you need to take the time to measure. So I got out the ruler and going to the closest fractions I could <laughs> and doing the math, it came out to actually 7.44 by 9.41. So that's the actual glass viewing area. You would never want to print the exact viewing area size because if it slips in the frame just a little bit you're gonna see glaring white from the paper so we're gonna go one eighth of an inch bigger on all four sides of the image just in case it slips a little bit in there so doing that math the 7.4 plus an eighth of an inch plus an eighth of an inch then rounding gives us 7.7 .7 one direction by 9.7 on the other. So what we're going to do to help us place this image is we're going to make a double rectangle that's measurements on the inside rectangle are this big and its measurements on the outside rectangle are this big. Back in Illustrator, let's clean up our layers a little bit to help us print. Now since I did a copy and paste, I only have one layer, but I want to create another layer here double click on this and I'll call it something like my guide so I know these are some things that I made to help me um, select this for printing um, in fact sometimes it's better to call things like this do not print because you want, don't want to accidentally have this layer on when you're printing um, so let's go ahead lock this layer on our do not print layer we're going to make those two rectangles so what we're going to do is select the rectangle tool we will bring the fill forward make that none bring the stroke forward and we can go to our swatches here and we'll select just a nice bright color that's not contained anywhere else in our document in my case um, magenta will work fine for that and then i'm going to click just somewhere either on the artboard or just off the artboard and I'm going to dial in those exact sizes that I had, which I believe were 744 by 9.41. I'm just going to verify that before I click OK. 744, 941. Click OK. I now have my first rectangle. I'm going to take the rectangle tool, click somewhere away from everything else put in the other numbers that I had, which adding an eighth of an inch in rounding brought me to 9.7 by 7.7. .7. I am now going to take those two boxes, two rectangles, select both of them, and then I'm gonna to go to my align options. I'm gonna align them center and uh, horizontally and align them center vertically. And so now, they're nice and clean. I'll zoom in here and you can see that we got a nice little border going around the inner box. And what I'm going to do just to make this easy to work with, select both of them, do a object and group so that if I select one, I get both of them selected. Command minus to zoom out a little bit. Go back to my layers. I'm going to turn the layer with the image off for just one second and I'm going to place this in one corner of the box. And you can just temporarily, if you want, go ahead and option drag out another copy of this just so that you can move these around and say, okay, if I'm gonna print two things, I wanna make sure I have pretty decent amount of space between them. However, be careful that you don't go too close to the edges. You cannot print on most printers that last quarter of an inch all the way around. So this is a pretty good placement for the two of them. Now I'll go ahead, lock this layer, unlock and turn on the eyeball for the layer with my image on. And I might wanna be smart here and draw a mark here on the, same, the whole thing, do an option drag and I just have a nice spare copy here just in case something goes wrong while I'm doing this. The other thing that would be very smart is to take the one that I'm working on and group it together. So I drag a marquee around my object, making sure that the do not print layer is locked. And now I'll go up to object, group. That way if I select any part of this image, the whole thing gets selected. And then I am going to be very careful 
that I hold down the shift key, click on a corner with the shift key down, move the mouse, release the mouse, then release the shift key. I do not want to stretch this after all that work that I put into it, end up with a goofy looking print. And then I'm just going to keep doing a combination of moving the image around and changing the scale size so that I make both of these rectangles look good. So the first rectangle, the smallest rectangle, that's where I want everything to look the best, but I have to realize that this could shift in the frame, so I need to make both rectangles look good. Now, another thing that you want to avoid when you're placing things in a frame is what's known as a tangent. Tangents can be good in artwork in general, but they're generally considered a bad thing when they're on the edge of a frame. If you're right at the edge of the frame and you have something that is just barely touching the edge, that's what's known as a tangent. So typically you're better off to raise it up a little bit so that it actually gets cropped off. And then in the case here with the shirt, I just want to make sure that it gets cropped here and then it gets cropped here. In other words, I have nothing goofy looking on either edge of either of these rectangles. That's not too bad. So let's say that I'm happy with that. The next step would be to conserve some ink here. There's no sense printing out all this extra ink here if we're never going to see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this outer rectangle and we're going to use a little trick in Illustrator that makes everything outside of that outer rectangle disappear. Before we do that, we've got to do a little bit of maintenance here in our layers. I'm going to unlock my Do Not Print layer and I'm going to select this one that was just a placeholder and delete it. Now I need to break these two things apart these two rectangles because they're each going to serve a purpose. To make it easier to select them, I'll lock my layer here, click on them. I now have both of them. I'm going to do Object, Ungroup. I'm going to take the one right here that's the inner one and I'm going to create a new layer for that one. I'll come down here, I'll click on the top layer, click on the new layer icon, double click here and name that and I'm going to call that crop and you'll see why in a little bit and what I'm going to do is once again select that guy I get a little rectangle here don't worry about the color of the rectangle all that rectangle means is that that represents the object that's selected in that layer so I'm going to click on the rectangle drag it up to this layer I can verify that I do have that and that alone on that layer by toggling the eyeball on and off lock that layer now what I'm going to do is make sure that this layer and only this layer is locked. So unlock that one and then we're going to select everything except of course this layer that's locked because it just won't allow you to select it if it's locked. Then we're going to go up to object and we're going to go to clipping mask and make and that is going to use that outer rectangle to clip everything that is physically located underneath it, which happens to be all of layer one, click on make and makes that clipping mask. If that did not work for you, listen to what I just said and, and repeat it, which means you've got to have the thing that you want to clip, which was that outer rectangle, needs to be the highest thing in the stacking order of your layers, whether it's on one layer or not, it needs to be the highest thing. Okay, so now with that done, we can then do our very next step, which is to make crop marks out of this other guy here, which is locked. So let's unlock it, but to make our life really easy, let's lock these two, unlock this one, select it. We're going to go to Effect, Crop Marks. And what that does is it takes that rectangle and puts marks on here that if you were to line up a ruler with these marks, you would cut exactly along this line. Now, we aren't actually going to do that in this case, and I'll explain further in a bit, but we want the person 
who is aligning our image